Alright guys, so here we are in Cyberpunk 2077. What I wanted to show everybody today was specifically the issue that plagues a lot of the Ryzen systems out there. As you can see right now, I'm playing at 4K. I'll drop in all the information about my specific settings um, into the video description below. But as you can see, I'm getting about 30 FPS. Um, you know, ray tracing is on pretty much at the max. And uh, it's, you know, pretty much console style settings right now as far as the feeling of the game goes. Now this is one of the center sections of town, so obviously it is going to be a little bit more CPU intensive. It is also going to really hammer on the graphics card as well. But a 3090 should not be performing at this abysmal level. Um, as you can see, again, the frame rates are really terrible. Now, I was trying to really get Rivetuner to show us the 1% minimums as well, or lows, I should say, but it's just not been cooperating with me so far. However, as you can see, it is performing quite poorly. So what can you do to actually improve this situation for yourself? Let's take a look at that now. All right, so first and foremost, and this is arguably the most important part here, of course, is being able to install the actual Ryzen fix. Again, I am on a 5900X, uh, so it is a 12 core CPU. And as you can see now, after installing this fix, which is just a drag and drop file, which I'll link in the description below, it is already performing better. Now, while the overall FPS has not necessarily gone up tremendously, what you do feel is that there are significantly lower drops overall in terms of the performance. So again, I wish I could have a little graph for you guys for the 1% lows, but in general, the game, as you can see, is performing just a touch better. And that is really going to be important because as you're playing, that's what you're going to be noticing the most is just those percentage lows that really hit the bottom percent of the FPS that are going to really kind of give you a difference of smoothness and gameplay. Again, you know, of course, there's obviously optimization still yet to be made, and I don't know how much more uh, sort of the cyberpunk devs are going to go for in this regard. They may end up giving us another big patch. They may not end up giving us another big patch. It just honestly kind of depends. However, I find that with this particular mod in place, which just replaces the exe file, it makes a pretty big difference. Now, before the 1.31 patch, I was getting really bad stuttering in the title uh, to the point where basically it was just unplayable unless I ended up tweaking all the settings completely all the way down um, and essentially just turning off the ray tracing completely because the uh, CPU just couldn't handle it. The uh, computer was getting completely bogged down and I was also getting um, some really strange kind of GPU usage spikes where it would go from being sort of like 50% loaded up uh, down to 30, uh, to then spiking all the way to something like 92, uh, and it was just all over the place, basically, until this fix ended up getting put in place. But this is not the only uh, fix that exists out there uh, that does make a difference. The other one is actually going to be uh, going into the Windows game graphics settings and actually tweaking that to give Cyberpunk a high performance uh, kind of level, because otherwise what basically ends up happening is, I guess, Unlike game mode for, you know, Xbox and stuff like that that has made its way over into the PC area, the graphics settings is another one of those little uh, things that Microsoft decided to add in and basically not tell us gamers. At least I'm not somebody that pays attention to this stuff a whole lot. So being able to actually see it um, and see the difference that it makes, uh, you'll be able to see after I apply the fix and we can go and take a look at this one more time. All right, so here we are now again, having applied the high performance setting. Again, as you can see, it is not so much the overall increase in frame rate that counts. It is more along the lines of, again, just increasing those 1% lows as much as possible. So tweaking everything to the extent that you can, just so that the game performs just slightly, slightly better. Now, obviously, again, there are still optimizations to be done here, and they're probably going to be drivers that NVIDIA will release that will, again, increase the performance possibly just a tad bit more. But currently, and again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what driver version I'm on right now, so I'll have to put that into the video description so that you guys know exactly what I'm running. And as you can see, again, there are definitely still dips, so it will, you know, at these settings that I'm running, and because of the, again, optimizations that still need to be made to the engine, there are still things to be done here. 
Also, something of note is that I'm currently running my GPU over a PCIe3 um, extension. So basically, I have a riser cable and the speed for the GPU is set to Gen 3 speeds. So this could be also impacting the game performance a little bit here as well. I don't think I would gain more than probably 4 or 5 FPS, you know, going to the Gen 4 uh, interface and going at Gen 4 speeds. But again, it's, it's hard to say without really seeing how much bandwidth is actually getting used up because all I'm seeing here is memory usage, which is currently sitting at 9 gigs, uh, which again means that for those folks that are on, for example, the 8 gigabyte uh, cards that are in the 3 series range, then you're going to probably be GPU limited in terms of the memory uh, running at the settings that I'm running. So you'll most likely end up having to turn them down unless you want to end up getting a bunch of hitching or have really long load ins for textures and the world in general. Now, as far as I can tell, there's still quite a few things that load in over time, but I am running on a Gen 3 PCIe um, SSD or NVMe SSD, if you will. And that also means that I'm not getting the maximum speeds that this game actually really needs. I have found that if you're running this on a regular SSD, there are quite a few hitches in the game world. So that is also something to look out for as well. If you want to get the best performance out of this game, you're better off using an NVMe drive. But again, I've not been able to test on a Gen 4 device or a faster device than what I have right now. I just have an Intel 1660p in here, and it is not a very fast NVMe drive by any modern standards and by any means for that matter. Now, the last thing we're going to take a look at is actually a program called Process Lasso. This is something that typically affects the affinity um, within the game's uh, utilization of the cores, as well as it does some scheduling on the Windows backend to kind of allow the game to take a higher priority over other tasks. Now, my computer is full of bloat, so having anything that in general will take away, um, you know, specific CPU time from the game is obviously bad. So that'll be the other part that I'm going to do before we jump into the rest of the video to see what performance difference it makes, if any at all. All right, and so now we're back using Process Lasso to give this game the highest priority as far as all the other processes go. Again, you know, it is not about getting a higher maximum FPS. That's not really the point uh, of the video and not really the point of all these little tweaks. The point is mainly to increase the 1% lows and in general to just buffer the lower FPS of the game and bring it up as high as possible so that when you do eventually get dips in the title, they don't feel as kind of jerky within the game's motion. You don't feel like it is stuttering as much. And in general, I can already tell that it is a smoother experience. Now, ideally, I'd want to make a video where I do show you guys the graph with the 1% lows once I can get Rivetuner to cooperate just that little bit more. And I'll give you guys some screenshots as the video progresses of what kind of I've done uh, within Process Lasso and within, obviously, the app for uh, tweaking the game performance or the graphics settings within Windows so that you can also see that as well. They're all really simple steps. They only take you maybe just a couple of minutes to set up and get going. And within each program, uh, once you do it just once, um, and with replacing the EXE, obviously, then you're good to go. You don't have to do it again, and everything just runs as it should, which is, of course, excellent because that means that you don't have to keep going back and doing things manually. Because, for example, if you wanted to set the affinity of this title, um, every time you'd have to go in and you'd have to do so manually from within the Windows Task Manager. Now, obviously, those of you who are a little bit more savvy, you could probably run a shell script of some kind um, or even just create a batch file that'll do it for you, um, you know, every time that you start the title, etc. But most people are probably not going to be technically savvy enough to do something like that. And while, you know, I'm somebody that could do something like this and write it, it would take me time and research to do it, um, which I could spend on um, gaming and making another video. So again, you know, it's just one of those things where if you're somebody that's, you know, technical enough to do so, you know, by all means, but there are these free programs that exist that allow you to do the same thing and allow you to do so really quickly and really efficiently. So in the end, you know, why not basically use them? Now, 
I will also be releasing some other videos um, on this game as I start creating more and more kind of tweaks for it uh, to kind of get everything up and running nice and well. But, you know, honestly, I feel like even at the 38, 35 FPS I'm getting right now, I feel that it is worth it just to have the lighting to be at the quality that it's at, also to have basically the entirety of the game's graphics just be as high up as they are. I'm just perfectly fine sacrificing that, you know, amount of FPS because the responsiveness still feels like it's there. I still feel like the game is performing as it should overall, and while sure it's not 60, it's not 100 plus FPS, but this is not a competitive shooter. It is just an FPS RPG, and as such, I don't feel like I need to have ridiculous frame rates in this game to really have a good experience. Again, if this video helped you guys out, um, I'd appreciate any comments in terms of what you'd like to see me do next. And again, I will be doing a video where I do go a little bit more in depth on the actual kind of setup and showing you more of the 1% lows in here so that you can get a better understanding of, you know, what the usage is like with the GPU and in general just how the game performs uh, once the tweaks have been applied so that you can do a little bit more than just seeing um, an FPS counter which is hidden by the rest of the game's UI. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time.